This is going to be quick and it's going to have a lot of information built into it in a short amount of time. This is going to be tips and tricks for using LEGO Digital Designer. Over the next 20 minutes I'm going to be telling you what took me over 20 hours of hardcore just building stuff in Digital Designer to discover. Okay, I'm going to start with copy paste which is one of your most basic features. Let's say that you're building something and you need one of these connector pegs. Well one of your options could be to go over here and click on the connector um, this this bin right here and go down and find your connector peg with bushing and put it in. Well, let's say that you're lazy or you just want to save that extra five seconds it takes you to find it. Click here, hold down control, press C, hold down control and press V and it pastes a new one. That was a copy and paste function just like you would do in your Word document or anything similar. Uh, extremely easy to do and saves you a ton of time. Uh, now let's see, click here, control C, control V, I don't even let go of the control button. I can put as many of these as I want on the board. Now let's say that I don't want these things to be sitting down on the ground like this, but I want them to be floating up in the air. Well, tough luck. Digital Designer doesn't let you define the height that the piece is at uh, by typing in a value, and you certainly can't lift it up into the air just by dragging. Uh, it took me a while to discover this trick, but if you want to move your piece up by peg holes, you can set up a vertical piece anywhere on the board and um, plug in a connector peg right there. Select both of them at the same time. Select both, select both the part that you want to raise into the air and the peg at the same time by holding down control, clicking on the first thing, while still holding down control, clicking on the second thing. You can select as many items as you want this way but for now we're just going to do these two and now that they're both selected click on the peg and raise that into the air and it raises that up now let's say you want to do that with a little bit more fine resolution you don't want to go up by peg holes you can also use a cross axle with a bushing on it click on the bushing hold down control click on the part and drag this up and down the bushing up and down the axle and your part will go up and down I'm going to be referencing this list. Using Alt-Tab, if you're working from instructions, like I uh, often do, you want to switch back and forth between Digital Designer and your instructions quickly. Well, how am I doing this so, this so quickly? It's simple. Hold down Alt, push Tab. There's a little bit more options you can do. If you continue to hold down Alt, you can select any screen you want in Windows 7 and later. Um, but the most basic version is just hold down alt push tab once and let go of both and you can toggle back and forth between screens I'll let you figure that one out in a little bit more detail use it it will save you a ton of time alright and next on our list we have snapping apart into something above ground level this is an EV3 motor it um, let's say one of our base most basic um, EV3 robots built with this motor uh, has this frame part stuck in between these but when I try to put it there it, it, it won't pop up onto it and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna use this trick uh, of dragging it up and down the pole instead it's much a simple much simpler solution the digital designer basically always wants you to be snapping into something you can't just let something float somewhere or set it on top of something it doesn't know what gravity is so you need to stick a connector peg in there if you want it to go in. And bam, simple. Um, looking up a part by the part number. Sometimes this works and sometimes it doesn't. Let's say that I am looking for this particular part right here and I can't find it because it is a very unique part and it's just hard to find. Well, First of all, I'm going to go into digital designer mode which will give me a lot more pieces and that's a trick that took me a while to find but I'm gonna paste that part number in there and bam it comes up right there now sometimes it doesn't so you'll have to go to the internet and paste the part number and then type Lego after it and hit enter and it tells you the name cross block 3 by 2 so I can go back here and type in cross block 3 by 2 and the part will come right up along with several other parts that have similar names. Alright, next on our list is looking at part by name. We did that. Uh, if you want to ever view the part name of something, you click on it and it shows up down here. Beam H-frame. So if I want to look up another one for whatever reason, I would type in Beam 
H and beam H frame will c will show up along with a lot of other things that are similarly named so I I can look up similar parts just by typing in a part of a part name next on our list is centering uh, oh another thing is if you want like a certain length of a part let's say I want a Technic piece that's 5M long. I just type in 5M and hit space and then when I open up the Technic bin it's going to li list all the things that have the word 5M in it first and so it'll pull that right up. If I didn't have that it will pull up all these parts and I have to scroll down until I get down to 5M or 12M which I don't think is actually a Technic length. It is not. I would have to go 13M because there are odd numbers for the Technic pieces. Okay, let's go to the next. We're about to run out of time in this first one. Alright, let's see. Uh, centering on a part. You can, let's say that right now I'm, I'm, I'm holding down the right button and s rotating my view about this motor, but let's say I wanted to get a good look at this over here. Well, I have to go here and then like zoom in. I can't see it. Long story short, right click on it and it'll center you back up so you when you press and hold your right mouse button you'll be centered around that and when you scroll in you'll zoom in on whatever part you right clicked on so I want to switch over to here right click on it and now I'm centered up over there next zooming in and out scroll the mouse button in and out rotating view hold down the right mouse button hiding parts this is a pretty cool feature let's say that I'm building something and I want to see something that's buried inside of something else so I'll set this right here and while that you figure out the applications you click here and you can hide parts so now see when I hide this now I can see that connector peg uh, control plus scroll to zoom in on PDF so when I'm looking at these parts you may have noticed that I was zooming in and out without clicking on the zoom buttons. I'm just holding down the control button and scrolling my mouse button in and out or up and down and that zooms in and out. If I let go it goes from page to page instead. So I'm going to go back here and to my list. Uh, hiding parts, control zooms, scroll, okay, part manip manipulation. Flipping a part. Um, parts not always going to be in the orientation you want when you first pull it out of the, the bin. So you click and start dragging it. Once you start dragging it, you can let go of your mouse button. But as as it's attached to your mouse pointer, you can press your right and left arrow buttons to spin it this way, or up and down to flip it end over end. Very useful. Um, oh, I, it's necessary. Copying and pasting a part. We talked about that. Multiple part selection. If you want to select more than one part, you click on the first part just like normal, then you hold down control and single left click on all the other parts that you want to select. And now they're all selected and I can drag in or I can hold down control, select them all and hit delete. So delete them, it's getting kind of messy. Uh, copy and paste multiple parts at a time. Do it. It's going to save you so much time. Let's say you got two pieces like this but you just built you want to just build you don't want to have to build them twice so just don't copy and paste the whole thing you can do more than one part at once all I did was hit control C control V while all those parts were selected and now I have two of them we talked about dragging a part up and down sliding it up and down uh, group, grouping your parts together let's say that I'm about to stick these two parts together but I don't want to lose control of my selection because now if I want to just select the part that I just put on there I have to individually select all this you don't have to do it before you go putting the part in hold down control and press G and that'll create a new group with that part in it now when I click and drag this and flip it spin it around and attach it here oh I missed well normally you'd have to drag every single part down individually but not when you've ha got a group you just select click on it and drag it down one and there. Now anytime you want to separate these two you just click on that group and pull it out. Uh, grouping, dragging apart, increment up and down, keep your bins closed. As you open more and more bins it gets confusing. You don't know where your, bin, where your bins end and where your individual parts are. Collapse them all. Only You should only have one bin open at a time. There's no reason to have